At sea level, if you bring water to 100 degrees Celsius, it turns to steam. It's a great trick that power stations still use to generate electricity. But all the water doesn't boil at once. It takes a lot of energy. Coal-fired power stations literally have energy to burn. But to generate power efficiently from low-grade heat sources like geothermal, you need something new. Our invention can generate power much more efficiently. We use a special fluid which is held under pressure. Our system adjusts the fluid's characteristics so that its temperature rises smoothly as energy is applied from a heat source. And what we avoid are wasteful differences between the temperature of the fluid and the heat source. Our system will make it possible to efficiently generate power from geothermal sources and industrial waste heat. Please welcome from Newcastle Professor Bedad Mogdateri and Alham Darucci. Bedad, Alham, thank you very much. Partners in invention and life. Do you, do you make a rule that you don't talk about at home? We do, in fact, actually talk about it at home. You talk about it at home? Always Just make sure it's, you don't do it when you have guests around. <laughs> no. right? Now, am I right in thinking that if we can harvest our geothermal reserves, the, the reserves are enormous. They're Absolutely. bigger than our gas reserves and they could really, if we can do it properly, take over how we generate electricity. Is that right? Absolutely. If, uh, look at the, if we look at the geothermal resources in Australia and we manage to harness even 1% of 1%. the res resources, we'll be able to provide electricity for 26,000 years. 26,000 years? It's a massive amount. Yes. You're aiming big, aren't you? <laughs> Gee whiz. So what happens is we get hot water, is that right? Hot That's water great. coming up from the earth. That's your raw yeah. power. Yeah. And that goes in there and what happens there? It's side by side with what? It's, it's like two vessels sitting side by side. Yeah. So heat is transferred from the water to the working fluid that actually sits now, in there. Now, and this is your fluid that you were talking about in the package. I know you can't tell us <laughs> what it is, but the fluid is then warmed and powers a turbine. Is that right, Elham? To generate electricity. And yes. that generates the electricity, but that's not... And then the, the water goes back down to the earth and you get more. So that's one circuit. But the other circuit is your fluid after generating the electricity. There's something called a recuperator. What does that do? Uh, it's basically a heat exchanger which is sitting here and uses some of the waste heat from the turbine to preheat the working fluid that goes to the main heater. Okay, so one of the ways you've made this more efficient, efficient is to harvest more of the excess heat you're generating, Available is that right? That's right, that's yeah. right. We are able actually to generate 40% um, better efficiency using this technology compared to the conventional systems. Come over to the panel, because it's, uh, the, the technology is very complex, but if the bottom line is, is that you can make things 40% more efficient, have a seat, then, well, that's, that's it's, a, it's, it's a compelling argument, is it not? It's a step change as far as... Fantastic. <coughs> Richard? Uh, if you're using this to uh, power cities, that's one thing, scaling it up to provide huge amount of power. Can you scale it down, what would be the smallest you could scale it down, to work from waste heat? What applications would that have? The scalability of the system is really unlimited. You can go up or down. Really. Could yeah. it also be used for solar power, for example? Yes, it can. It can be used in combination with other renewable energies as well. So it could also be used by bi uh, with biomass as well. Wow. Fina. Now, I know you can't tell us what these fluids exactly are. They can't tell you. But, uh, right. But there must be something about the properties of some of these fluids that make them really Absolutely. good in terms of giving you this performance. What, what is that? First of all, we needed, uh, because we're working with supercritical fluids, we needed something which has a, a relatively low supercritical, uh, basically, point. So uh, in terms of pressure and temperature, they're quite uh, reasonably low. Um, the second thing is um, they're environmentally friendly, they're widely available, cheap, no environmental impacts, as I said, mm. and um, something which... Sap! <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not right, you're not right. <laughs> Give me a hint. Hold on, hold on. Hello. It's amazing we hear about these amazing thermal efficiencies uh, that your technology is obviously able to deliver. 
Are you always able to get that or does that depend upon the nature of this low grade heat source? Well, as you go to a higher heat sources, you would be able to, um, the total amount of energy that you would get would be higher, but the relative efficiency would be similar. Mm -hmm. Lava. <laughs> Why off? Sell it. Man, you, you can go all night with that. <laughs> you, have another, it. you have another chance. <laughs> One more. <laughs> Three guesses. All right. Elham, um, the, the efficiencies of what you guys have designed has huge implications for Australia's greenhouse emissions. Okay. So in terms of fitting it to existing power stations and I guess any industry that has hot waste coming out of it, how easy is it to fit your system into an already existing plant? Uh, we think that it, would, it wouldn't be that difficult. It would be very easy to do so. Well, I was really excited to see that as well as this pattern. You had a pattern for desalination. Yes. Now, is it the case that when your water comes out of this, it actually comes out not the usual briny thing, but something a bit special? We uh, came up with this idea of putting that through a novel desalination plant, yeah. which actually on the side as a byproduct generates a little bit of portable water for you. Human blood. <laughs> is that what it is? All done. Is it, you know, you're not a wizard. All right. Summing up, uh, Richard. The wonders of thermodynamics in another revolutionary application. And I can promise you that when I really grasp the conceptual nature of entropy as the loss of information, <laughs> I'll get in touch with you. <laughs> Or using low-grade, uh, you know, heat sources is just another example of uh, what we have to do to move towards sustainability. So I think that's fantastic. So, yeah, look, as an inventor, I'm really impressed with the efficiencies you've achieved over other people's stuff. But I really want to know what the supercritical secret source is. <laughs> <laughs> You're not alone. Well done. Thank you very much thank for coming. Please thank Professor Bedad Montaveri and Dorucci. Um,